Thank you.
He's so worthy to be praised, so worthy to be glorified. How many of you are grateful to be in his house today? This time last year, we weren't in the house of the Lord, but he's brought us here today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This song just says, Everything, everything, you're everything. I worship you today, Jesus, because you're everything to me. You're everything. Your life me. and breath. Life and breath. The song is so simple. It says you're everything to me. You're everything to me. You're my peace. You're my peace. You're everything to me. You're everything. Your joy in sorrow, joy in sorrow. You're everything, You're everything. Your hope for tomorrow, hope for tomorrow. Come on, we want you to shout it out with us. Everybody say, Master, Master. You're my Savior. For being a ruler, you're my redeemer. redeemer. You're my shelter. shelter. I know you know this one. Provider. Provider. Thank you for being my healer. healer. Oh, you're my father. How many witnesses do I have? You're everything to me. Everything to me. You're everything. Everything. I give you glory, Jesus. You're everything to me. You're everything. Your life and breath. Life and breath. In Him we live, we move, we have our being. He's everything to me. You're everything to me. You're my he promised to keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me everything you're, everything you're my joy in sorrow joy in sorrow you're my everything you're my everything you're everything my hope for tomorrow hope for tomorrow come on I want y'all to blow the roof off right here come on say you're my savior. savior, you're my ruler. ruler, come on somebody cry out, Redeemer, Redeemer. you're my shelter. shelter, and whenever I needed you, you're provided. Thank you for being 
Lord Jesus. Come on, you're everything, everything. You're everything to me. Yes, you are, Jesus. You're everything, everything to me. Everything to me. Who else can I turn to when I'm in trouble? I call on you. You're everything. You're everything. You're my to master, me. savior. Rule, redeem, deliver, provide. You're everything. You're everything I call you Jesus, 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 Jesus. You're everything. You're everything. Whatever I need, whatever you need, He'll be right there for you. He's everything. We're gonna say it one, 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 one more time. He's everything to me. You're everything to me. Well, good morning, beloved. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. You know, I always say this, it's always your choice what you're going to do with this day. And let's start it off with giving God praise, glory, and honor. Let me tell you something. God is so worthy to be praised. Now, I know you heard the praise team did a marvelous job leading us to the throne of grace. But let me tell you something. There's nothing like your personal moment of giving God praise. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he's done for me. Now, I know God's been done uh, doing some great things for you. So I want you today to take this moment and praise God right there in the comfort of your home. Maybe you're at work or riding in the car, wherever you may be. I want you to stop and pause before you proceed doing anything else and give God some praise. I'm excited about today's message. I'm excited about what the Lord is getting ready to do in your life. Today, we're dealing with something so important to your being. You know, we've been talking about be, and that's a very powerful word, uh, not just being uh, in existence, but you got an identity that God wants you to hold true to. And many of us are trying when God told you to be. Now, <laughs> it's time for us to get that word today. Today's message is entitled, listen, listen very carefully. Be ye separate. Oh, my God. Come on out from among them and be ye separate. Look, I want you to take time and share this message with someone today who needs a word from God. This message will revolutionize their life forever. Now, be kind to someone, be good to someone, and share with them this word. And I guarantee you, it's going to take them to the next level. I'll be back in a little while. Let's get right into this word. right into the word today. Y'all ready for a word? Our subject has been B and I want us to understand how important this is and remain standing for the reading of the word. Uh, We are in this place of being. The Lord is not saying to us to attempt or to try. I want you to hear this because it's so important. You must be what God called you to be. You got to get past the excuse making of I'm trying. Give me a little bit more time. Be patient with me. When are you ever going to be what God has called you to be? Some of us have been in this journey for decades now, and we have used this excuse over and over again that the Lord is working on me. I'm a work in progress. That's true. But when is the progress ever going to show some fruitfulness? No one who was born as an infant, and all of us were, after 20 years remained in infant stages. That happens and something's wrong with that child. And if you have been around me, you know that maybe possibly if you've been here 15 or 16 years, you've seen 
some changes. I mean, you know, when I got here, I was 44, 44 years old. A lot of energy, running around doing everything, and demanding that you do everything at my energy level. Of course, that energy level has diminished a little bit, so now some of you are glad. Lord, thank you for sake, taking some of the energy away from him because he's not as energetic as he used to be and demanding that we operate at that same level of energy and passion. But things have changed at this age of nearly 60. Changes happen. But we cannot continue to uh, use excuse that I'm becoming when God said be. Today we go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We're going to look at verse 17. It says here, therefore, come out from among them, among unbelievers, and separate yourselves from them. Says the Lord, don't touch their filthy things, and I will welcome you. In the King James Version, it reads a little differently. It says, come out from among them and be ye separated, or separate, amen. And I want to talk today about being separate. Look at your neighbor and say, be separate. You may have a seat. Last week, we discussed the fact that we are not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. This is very, very important that we are not yoked together with folk who don't match our size, our speed, and our strength. We take this thought from the book of Deuteronomy where the Bible tells us not to yoke an oxen with a donkey. I'll make it clean this week. This steered our thinking to examine those who we have fellowship with or who we allow into our spirit personal space, certainly who you have been allowing into your life can affect your being, can affect your being. Who speaks to you? Who have you allowed and gave authorization to speak prophetically into your life? You hear their voice. Who have you allowed to influence you or to shape your thinking? Many people, when we think of the people that we have in our circle, we have not investigated them at all. We have not investigated, we have not vetted our circle at all. We accept people in our inner circle without vetting their credibility or their background. As much as you may know, you may have someone who's totally psychotic in your life. Who's a mass murderer, pedophile, Hello. You and some of us have allowed every and anyone to come in. Think about it like this. When you apply for credit, credit card, a loan, the company doesn't just give you what you request. They don't give you access to that money. They have a system that checks our credibility. They want to see how well did you manage your credit before applying for credit with them. They call it credit worthiness. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Credit worthiness. Think about it. This is a system that puts in place uh, to bring assurance that they can trust you with their money. And give, sometimes they give you a score to say how much money they will loan you. If your score is too low, you'll get nothing until you repair your credibility. Now, if they have devised a system to protect their money, why haven't you devised a system to protect your life? Are you here with me now? You can get your money back, but how about your life? Have you scored people to see if they have handled Relationships in the past with credibility and accountability. Have you seen what they've done with their past relationships, even with you in the short time you've known them? Have you observed to see the character or the integrity of this person? 
if their if their story remains the same or if they're telling lies, if they're truthful, have you checked into their personal behaviors? I gotta be careful who I allow into my life and who I yoke up with. And Paul, the apostle Paul instructs us not to be unequally yoked. So he tells us that I cannot allow an unbeliever, someone who's an unbeliever, to hook up with me who is a believer. Because sooner or later, either you are going to follow me or I'll end up following you. How I many you know the devil has a persuasive way of getting the body of Christ to go back to the world? Now, when we speak of yoking, it's not the same as being in the same place. It doesn't mean that. But it means that you're tied together. Tied together. Now, we can be in the same place, but we may not be yoked together. I'm in the same place with a whole lot of people from day to day, but we have no yoking together. In the King James Version, Paul uses the word fellowship, which is koinia in the Greek. And koinia portrays an intimate spiritual communion. Now, whoever you're in koinia with, you develop a soul tie to. Hmm. You let someone get that close to you, automatically, what's on them becomes a part of your life. This is when you find yourself not, you know, you start altering a little of yourself to accommodate the people in your life. Lord, I'm in soul tie with this person. So uh, what happens is they become directly tied to your emotions, your will, your decisions, your choices. Y'all know what a soul tie is. And all these soul ties are not bad. Some soul ties are great. But uh, for bad soul ties, souls are the toxic soul ties, you got to make sure that you're not tied to people who are going to tie your life up and cause you to be in bondage. Someone ought to say, well, it took too much for me to get free for me to let somebody bring me back to bondage. Some of you just got free this year. And now you're going to let some booger bring you back to bondage? No, indeed. Look at the Bible says this, that when a man gets free, he got to stay free. And those whom Christ has set free, let them be free indeed. Someone ought to celebrate your freedom. I used to be in soul ties with people that had my mind in bondage, my thinking in bondage, my choices in bondage, even my relationships in bondage relationships people had a lot to say opinions about different things concerning my life they criticize they had communication and conversations about what I wore how I dress what I drove where I live that's just bondage yeah. and whenever you find someone who is bringing a spirit of control in your life it is the spirit of witchcraft. <laughs> Control is really just witchcraft. Look in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. It says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Bad company corrupts good character. Now, some of you, you know, it's very obvious that Sometimes you've been hanging around poor folk that just, they ruin your, your joy. I can tell, man. I can tell when I, when I see y'all together and then when they leave you, they leave you depleted of all your joy. They're called joy killers. Peace robbers. They leave in mental distress. If you don't watch yourself, your life will start reflecting their lives. That's why you got to be careful that you don't have bad company corrupting your good character. I started this day off with all positive thoughts. 
And then here you come around, I see your number on the phone, and I've got to make a choice whether I want to talk to you or not, because when I talk to you, you never have anything good to say. You never have a praise report. The Lord never does anything miraculous for you. You're always in trouble. There's always a sickness. There's always a pain. Come on here. And all the people that you asked me to pray for are folk in your circle. They all got problems. Y'all don't understand. I'm listening to the prayer call sometimes, and I don't know how in the world you got that many friends with problems, sickness, disease. Every morning you get on the prayer call, will you pray for my friend? She's about to, she's about to, you know, she's got cancer. This one here is going through divorce. This one here could try to commit suicide. This one, man, you need to get some new friends. Y'all ain't saying that to me now. That's okay. Soul ties with the wrong people can derail and detain your destiny. This is why we must examine who belongs where in our lives. I've discovered that there are different degrees that you allow people into your life. You can't allow everybody into the same place. Everyone cannot be your BFF. Some people are merely merely acquaintances. Call them that. Some people are just co-workers. Call them that. Some people are neighbors. Call them that. Some people are classmates. Call them that. Some people are relatives. That, this means that we're in the same family, but we're not close. Come on, y'all talk to me here today. Yeah, we come from the same family, but baby, I don't really know you. We don't get down like that. We haven't spoken in years. And he's going to be, hey, what's up, blood? We ain't blood. No, 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 no. <laughs> Some people are just people I see in passing. Some people are people I just met once. Some people, they just do work for you. Some people I worship with. Some people are from my past. Mm. Some people are my confidants. Some are real close friends. And some are real family. You got to classify these people. You got to find out where they belong. Are you an acquaintance? And why am I calling an acquaintance my best friend? You my BFF. You don't know nothing about me. The Bible said, know them that labor amongst you. You got to know something about the people that you deal with. You need to stop calling everybody your friend. Everybody's not your friend. If you really want to know what a friend is, the Bible says that a friend's take it closer than a brother. So if they have slid in the moment of heat and sliding moments, if they slid away from you, they were not your real friend. The Bible says it, they will stick and not slide. <laughs> Look at someone and say, they stick to you, but they don't slide. And if they're sliding away from you all the time, they're really not a good friend. If they always threaten you, if you look, you do one more thing, I'm out of here. If you, do, you almost left you last week. Well, if you do that, then stop threatening me and get on about your business. I don't know about you, Stephanie, but I don't like threats. Whatever you're going to do, you're going to do it and get on, get on, get on, do it. Jesus said, whatever you're going to do, do it quickly. So it's a system that keeps everyone where they belong. In the Old Testament, the people of God constructed the tabernacle in the wilderness, and there were three different tiers in this tabernacle. There was access to three different places. If you're taking notes, you may want to remember this. It's a place called the outer court. The outer court. Someone say the outer court. Then secondly, the inner court. Inner court. And then... Thirdly, the holy of holies. Now, a great deal of people were allowed in the outer court. A great deal of people, many, many people were allowed into the outer court. But even this space was reserved for those who could be trusted. 
You can't allow people into your outer court who cannot be trusted. Even on the outer court, you got to have people that you don't have credibility. Secondly, the inner court was reserved for those who were of a higher status of accountability. Even not for just commoners, not just for everybody, but these people were proven, they were tried. These folk, you've earned the right to be here. Now what is this, why doesn't this apply in our lives when it applies everywhere else? Everybody doesn't allow, is not allowed to be everywhere. Now, I was walking through Delta one day and I saw this room that was for special people. People of the platinum status. I want to know why in the world I'm not a part of this platinum status. I want to know why in the world they won't let me in. I'm Bishop Glenn B. Allen Sr. of Dutchess Christian Center International. I've been around here forever flying on Delta. Matter of fact, all my flights are first class. I should have earned this status by now. Let me in this room. They said, no, sir. You're not a platinum member. How do you become a platinum member? You got to fly so many miles for to be a platinum member. And I had not earned the right to go into that room. And I want to tell you something. Somebody has not paid the price or the cost to be in your space. This place here is reserved for people who have earned it. Stop letting everybody in your personal space into your inner court. Your inner court. Oh, I'm about to say something. The inner court, which could be inner course, who ain't got no business in there. Oh, my God. Come on, Bishop. Stay holy today. I'm trying to help somebody in this place. Some of y'all are loud inner course. With somebody who had no business, who had to prove it themselves. You just met them. You don't even know if they got a job, where they live. They don't know nothing about them. But here you have an inner course. Why y'all not talking to me? Oh, y'all nasty. Y'all nasty. I can see it now. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. This place is reserved. Someone say you got to pay the price. You gotta pay the dues. You gotta go through something to get to this. You don't just get to this. You don't just get to this. There's another place called the Holies of Holies. And this was reserved for the high priest. Now, that's just not for everybody. This is for someone who's called, who's ordained, who's anointed. Not everybody goes into this place. There's a certain amount of people, maybe one or two, who can enter into this place, who can speak into my life. Everybody's not ordained to speak to me, so I only have one or two people I really listen to. I'm not listening to a plethora of different voices because God has assigned just one or two people to be in the holies of holies when I need spiritual guidance and spiritual direction. I'm not watching T.D. Jakes because T.D. Jakes is not my shepherd. Oh my God. Yes, God will give you shepherds that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. See, you got to understand, everybody ain't got no business in your holy of holies. God has reserved that for somebody that he's anointed for your life, that he's assigned to your life, that he's appointed for your life. If you don't understand that today, I'm sorry, but you, you got to get this today. This is why you're so confused because you got too many people speaking into your spiritual life. Why you on one Sunday you sitting there shouting, the next Sunday you looking confused. Now, I ain't, that ain't what he said. Well, he ain't your shepherd. See if you can call him. Come on now. See if you can get him on the phone when you're not feeling well, when you're in the hospital or someone dies in your family. See if he'll come and see about you. See if he'll help pay your rent. See if, oh, come on here now. See if he'll help get your child out of jail. See what he can do for you. That's why God is giving you a shepherd. 
There's only one that needs to be in the holies of holies. Now, what this shows us is that we should compartmentalize those who are in our lives. We love everyone, but everyone doesn't warrant the same space and place in my life. Someone once accused me of treating people different in this church now. They said, I treat those who give more better than those who don't. <laughs> well, there's a hint of truth to that statement. I know it's going to surprise you, but there is some truth to that. First of all, it's humanistic for folk to treat people who give you more better than those who always take from you. I'm sorry, I'm just being real. Come on, it's, it's humanistic. Don't you get more attention to who is always feeding you rather than those who are always needing you? Yeah, he should be different. Well, you're different. You treat me different too. See, this, you don't understand. Relationships are reciprocal. They're reciprocal. You want from me, but you're not giving up to me. You want me to pray for you, but you're never praying for me. You want me to be faithful to you, but you're never faithful to me. You want me to be there for you, but you're not there for me. You want me to stand with you when you're going through your stuff, but you can't stand with me when I'm going through mine. So can, can I help somebody here today? The relationship is reciprocal. When I'm going through my worst moments, where are you? You have marriage problems, I got to stay right there. You got financial problems, I got to stay right there. Y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all go through divorce. I got to be right there. You end up in jail. I got to be right there. But let me go to jail. Oh, what didn't he did now? I mean, my God, Bishop. <laughs> the Bible says Peter was in jail and the church was at home praying for him. See, they didn't judge him. They didn't say, why is he in there? What, what woman did they catch him with and all this kind of stuff? They, they just start praying. They start praying. And while they were praying, God was sending an angel to free Peter from jail. What you need to do is reciprocate in the relationship. Now, furthermore, there's a great difference. Now, get this. Between those who don't give and those who can't give. <laughs> hey man, some folks just, they just, ain't that they can't, they just don't. So you want me to treat you the same way that those who do? Surprise. It's not the amount, it's really not the amount, it's the amount of support. Everybody got a level of support they give on. And again, you know, would you treat someone different, or don't you treat people different who treat you different? And if good people that treat you good, you treat them bad, treat them on the same level as those who treat you bad? Uh -uh. No, indeed, no, my wife treats me good, so guess what? Man, look, she's consistently good, good, good. Even when I'm bad, she's good. So, when she calls me and says, baby, I just saw something. I said, what it cost? It's some obscene amount. I said, oh, Jesus, here we go again. But then I put it on a scale with the good treatments. Oh, y'all not hearing me. I get, I put it on a scale with, when I'm hungry, she makes sure I got something to eat. Come on now. Yeah, I, the other morning I woke up, she was laying her hands on me, making sure she was praying for me while I was still asleep. Because, see, y'all not getting this under, you, you want me to treat her the same way that someone who's my enemy? 
No, 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 I'm sorry. All of us got barriers for folk. So allow me to inject this thought. The right connection can affect your life in a positive way. So you get great yoking with people and they can affect your life in a positive way. Proverbs 18 and 22 says, the man who finds a wife finds a treasure. Mm. Finds a treasure. Now here's the problem, little girl. You ain't no wife. So you're not a treasure yet. You can, you can turn yourself around right now and start being wife material. But wife material ain't what you're watching on the internet. Uh-huh. That stuff you're watching on TikTok and Instagram, all that fakeness. Now that's good play material. And the guy that goes after that, he just want to play with you. He ain't trying to wife that up though. Come on. Come on, you know. Because we need we don't need your, your body made by Fisher and your brain made by Mattel. Some of y'all been concentrating on your outward, but you ain't got none on the inside. You're broken, you're broke and broken. Your credit's jacked up. You can't hold an intelligent conversation. All you got is booty and weave. And a bad attitude. Popping your neck and eyelashes out like two big fans blowing in my face. Wearing clothes that you shouldn't be wearing. Looking all crazy and like you had the circus showing all that stuff. Nobody wants to see all that, baby. Put all that nasty stuff up. Nobody wants to see all that. You ain't no wife. You too trifling to be a wife. And get me, let me tell you something. People are going to buy whatever you advertise. Whatever you advertise, that's what they buy. So I'm, I'm trying to help somebody. You can roll your eyes at me all you want here today. I'm talking to your nasty tail. You can, I'm telling you right now, people are buying whatever you advertise. You, 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 you advertise a hoe, they going to buy a hoe. Y'all know I'm going to get it real up in here. Respect yourself and, and make sure you market yourself as a wife. Let me go on. The second part of that scripture, he receives, that's what I'm supposed to be talking about. He receives favor from the Lord. Receives favor from the Lord. When you hook up with the right person, when you yoke with the right person, when you to the right person, favor starts coming on your life. Let me tell you something. God says, that's the relationship that you got to be involved with. And whenever I see the two people that I've ordained to be together, I will put favor on their lives. You'll be blessed going in and blessed coming out in the city and in the field. God will bless you every way you turn around because when you hook up with somebody who you are in agreement with, I ain't ready to go there yet. I ain't going there. Just hold me down. Hold me down. Woo! Y'all got a few more minutes? So I think it's safe to say that we must be careful who we allow where. Paul gives us different examples in this chapter. He challenges us to avoid company with the unrighteous, those who walk in darkness, the evil, and the fatherless, or the faithless, faithless, I'm sorry, the faithless. Then we come to verse 17, and he says something else. He shifts gears. He says, therefore, come out from among unbelievers 
and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things, and I will welcome you. Now, a couple weeks ago, we talked about being real. Well, that can't happen until you stop mingling with folk who influence you to walk wrongfully. In Psalm uh, 1 and verse 1, it says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. David says here that we should monitor our counsel, monitor our company, and monitor those who we have conversations with. Now let's revisit here Paul's letter in this church to Corinth. He says, come out from among them. Leave the company of those who influence you to do wrong. And then he uses this powerful word, separate. separate. Someone say separate. separate. Now too many of us don't know what happens when you mix with the wrong when you're trying to be right. This is called, when you are separating yourself, it is called sanctification. We're getting ready for something amazing. God, I'm getting ready for something I've never seen before. And when God got ready to bring the children of Israel into the promised land, he told them to sanctify yourselves. Because tomorrow I will do wonders among you. You got to separate yourself from things and people that keep you in bondage. You can't be what you're supposed to be if you don't pull yourself out of the mix. You can't mix it everybody. Sometimes uh, we look at it, it's like trying to pull or put oil and water in the same container. We don't mix. We don't mix. I need to be yoked with somebody I can mix with. Everything don't go together. There's a separation. God says, I got to separate you because if I don't separate you, what's on them is going to get on you. Now, come here. I, I got Vanna White here this morning, but she's Vanna Black. So come here, Vanna Black. And bring, bring that with you. I want to show you something this morning. Can you adjust this? All right. I got to, uh, when my mother was teaching me what I like to call home economics, we don't, we don't have that class in school anymore. And your mother ain't teaching you nothing, so these kids don't know how to wash, clean, cook, brush their teeth, comb their hair, put on deodorant, wash their nasty tail. They don't know how to do nothing. They're just nasty. These kids just terrible. No one's teaching them home economics. Well, she was teaching me how to, clo to, to wash clothes. I didn't know. I didn't know this. And some of you don't know it even now. But you, you come with a basket full of clothes and you have a hamper here. It has uh, two different kinds of clothes in it. You got to separate the colored clothes from the white clothes. Now, I got a basket here. got some colored stuff in here. Yeah, you put that over there. You got some white here. You put that over here. Colored over there. White over here. Colored over there. Colored over there. White over here. Mm. Colored. Nice shirt, by the way. Over there, white, get the rest of that. You see, colored, white, colored, white. Now, this is what your laundry room should look like when you get ready to wash clothes. You never put in the colored with the white. This is what happens. This is not a racial situation. This is a, an illustration to show you what happens when you put in 
the wrong thing. You got to separate them. Because there are two different ways to wash the colored and the white. You wash the colored clothes in detergent, possibly fabric softener. But to wash white clothes adequately, to keep them white, you're going to need to use bleach. Now, if you take one of these items and you put it over here in the accidentally, put it over here in the white clothes and it's hidden down at the bottom, it has mingled in and mixed in. And then when you get ready to wash it, two things happen. What's in this black garment is going to make dingy spots on the white garments. What's going to happen to the colored clothes is it's going to fade and lose some of its color. Because they both can't go through the same process. They can be worn together, but they can't be washed together. Some of us, we can worship together, but we can't work together. Y'all not hear what I'm saying. Because we can't go through the same thing with the same kind of pressure, with the same type of process. So here it is, here it is. When God allows you to hook up with somebody, make sure that you separate them who will fade off into your life so I can keep my life clean. Y'all not saying nothing here today. I got some I got some folk over here ain't got no business over here that every time I allow you to get over here, you make my life dingy. You make my life dull. You make me miserable. You make me sick. I don't know why I keep feeling this way, but I keep trying to put you in with my stuff and my bleaching process is not working for you. Oh, somebody here today ought to get it. You ought to get it. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, excuse me, but I'm trying to get to a blessed place. I'm, I'm trying to get somewhere where God is getting ready to take me higher, but I can't keep on mixing people together. Excuse me, sad Christian, but I ain't got no more room for you. Excuse me, depressed Christian, I ain't got no more room for you. Excuse me, mentally disturbed Christian, I ain't got no more room for you. I got to get around some people with joy. I'm looking for some people who have some peace. I don't look for nobody who can't praise the Lord. I need some praises that are around me. Now look at someone and say, everything ain't right. But I'm still a praiser. Sometimes I'm sick in my body. But I'm still a praiser. Sometimes my money's funny. But I'm still I'm still a praiser. The Bible says that the dead cannot praise the Lord. I've been trying to figure out how is it that you sit here all service long and you don't give God praise. Well, the fact is that the dead can't praise the Lord. But those who have breath let everything that have breath praise the Lord. I believe if God woke you up this morning, now don't join hands with nobody. Tell somebody, neighbor, if you're not going to praise God, you can sit this one out. Because I got to leave here this morning. Yes. I got to leave here this morning with the victory. I got to leave here with my healing. I got to leave here with my deliverance. And the only thing that's going to work is God is requiring one more praise payment. And I believe somebody in this house has made your way over here to 182 North Glen. You drove from Jonesboro. 
You drove from Stockbridge. You drove from Riverdale or wherever you came from. But you made it here to this little old house. And you came here to get a breakthrough. Tell you what you ought to do. Live your hands with all the live folk and give God a praise. Well, beloved, I'm excited about that word. I hate to cut it off right here, but man, I hope that it bless your life, you and your family. I pray right now that you understand God has some separating and he wants to do some sanctification. And of course, if he sanctifies you, God's getting ready to bring some great things into your life. Whenever he brings you apart from other situations of people, God is putting you in a special place to bless you. So get ready now for the blessing of the Lord to overtake your life like never before. I'm excited about this. I want you to continue to press on and be what God has called you to be. Be who he called you to be. And don't ever think of it as trying. You're not attempting. God said, just be. Now today, after hearing such a powerful word, there may be someone here today that needs to give your life to Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, or possibly you need to connect with God or reconnect with the church. Thirdly, I want you to get this. I want you to be a part of our daily devotion. I like to send you out a word every day, and this is how it happens. If you want to be saved, all you got to do is text in the word save to that number right there at the bottom of the screen. Then secondly, if you want to be connected or reconnected, then all you got to do is text in the word connect. Thirdly, if you want a part, be a part of our daily devotion, then all you got to do is text in the word daily and we'll get you set today. Someone will call you and welcome you to the family of God, welcome to our church and connect you with our daily devotion. Then last but not least, man, we are praying every morning at 714 a.m., why 714? Because it represents the scripture in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek uh, my face, and turn from their wicked ways, God says, then would I hear from heaven and heal their land. Now, I want to tell you something. Prayer works. It still works. We're praying the prayer of faith, and people are praying every day, and we're seeing results. I want you to join us for prayer in the morning at 714 Eastern Time. Well, I pray you made a great decision today and that you have uh, made a choice to do one of these things today to help and become a part of this wonderful uh, family of God. Now, at this time, let's do something very, very special. Let's prepare ourselves to give. On this Sunday morning, this is what the Lord says on the first day of the week, we should bring an offering to the house of God. Well, here we are on the first day of the week. It's not Monday. It's today. This morning, I want to start this week out with sowing a seed of faith. Sowing a seed of faith. Here we are in the month of August, the month of new beginnings. I don't know if you understand how significant this time is as we're fasting and praying in this month. I want you to prepare to give unto the Lord a special seed this morning. And I want you to know something. God's getting ready to overflow you with blessings. Luke 638 says, now listen carefully. It says give. And then as a comma, you know, I believe in punctuation marks. You got to obey the rules. Give is your part. Then everything that comes after that is God's part. And it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and then running over. So God caused men to give into your bosom. God is going to put favor on your life to cause men to bless you. Men you don't even know, people that you have never met before, getting ready to bless you. God has a blessing out there with your name on it, but it starts with your obedience to giving. Now today, I want to prompt you to do so. Make sure you're paying your tithes so God can open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. God says also for the tither that I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Today, things been eat up your money. God says I'll cause those things to cease. All you got to do is be a faithful tither and a faithful giver. I'm praying today for your abundance and the overflow in your finances. Even during this fast, I'm looking for miraculous, miraculous money to come your way. Now, God's going to give somebody watching me this morning a financial breakthrough. 
I want you to know it starts with your giving. I dare you to sow a seed that you did not intend on sowing and watch God bring your financial breakthrough into your life. It's going to surprise you. It's going to happen this week. Now, with all that said, I'm thanking God for your partnership. I thank God for your faithfulness. You've been so kind to us, even during this pandemic, watching us online. Thank you for being faithful. We're here at church. You can choose to be here with us next Sunday. We're going to be right here, 182 North Glen. If the Lord says the same, you can either join us here or join us online again. We we'll welcome you wherever place you join us. But until next time, know this. I love me some you. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. We'll see you next time.